If you're headed to Colorado Springs, stop right now, pull over the car if you're driving. We're gonna tell you seven things that you have to know if you wanna be a local in Colorado Springs. All right, like I said, today we're gonna talk about seven things that if you're gonna be a local in Colorado Springs, you have to know. Let me just say real quick, don't forget, this channel all about where to eat, work, live, play in Colorado Springs. So if you have any questions about that stuff, definitely hey, subscribe, hit us up, call, text, email. We're here to do anything we can to help you guys out. Mm -hmm. Francis, number one thing. Always, always bring extra layers in the car. Mm, you just, yes. you never know what the weather's gonna do. You really don't. Yesterday, I mean, it was gorgeous in the morning. Yeah, and yeah. And got a crazy hailstorm in the Big afternoon. Big hailstorm, that's right, yeah. Um, if you're driving along I-70, sometimes they actually close the tunnels. And yeah. I've heard people get stuck on I-70 overnight in their car. That's no fun, man. No. That's no fun. So you don't wanna be sitting there in your car freezing yeah. Without any extra layers. Got to have the layers. Yep. It is. It's all about the crazy weather changes. And I think a lot mm -hmm. of people think, oh, I'm going to the mountains. I'm going to go hike a 14er. Of course, I'm going to have layers. Yeah. Man, you can be just making a nice little drive through the foothills and all of a sudden starts pouring rain like crazy. Mm -hmm. Temperature drops, especially in the spring and the fall. Yeah. We were talking earlier and like a lot of people, they'll have like a whole box of stuff, man. It's like a go bag in their car, you yeah. know, with like food, blankets, water. I don't do that, but I do have, I always have a raincoat and a puffy coat in my car. Mm -hmm. I mean, puffy coat, that's kind of the classic Colorado suit jacket anyway, right. if you will. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely extra layers, man. Because like I said, it's not just when you're up in the mountains, it's when you're in town too. And you can tell like you'll be cruising around town and you know, maybe it's like late spring, early fall. And you can kind of tell the people they're tourists because they're usually not prepared at all. Yeah. And you'll see like the temperature dropped and they're still in their t-shirt and everybody else has like a Patagonia puffy coat on or something. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You there's, can tell. There's always that one guy that's walking around in the rain with shorts and, you know, flip flops on. But yes, yes. Be prepared. Exactly, yeah. So number one, definitely have extra layers with you no matter where you're at. Number two, lip balm and lotion. Now, when we say that out loud, it sounds a little funny, right? Yeah. Like what the heck's going on here? Yeah. Why do I need lip balm and lotion everywhere I'm at? It's because it's freaking dry. It's a high desert here, man. Yeah, it gets super dry. Uh, my lips are literally constantly trapped, especially in the winter. Yeah. Notice it's worse in the winter for Definitely sure. Definitely is, yeah. It's just, it's so dry. I gotta admit, man, I don't even, what's like the the cheapest of Blistex, I think it is or something? I don't yeah. know if I'm allowed to Blistex, say the name, Carmex, but whatever that is. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even use that, man. I steal my wife's now. Really? It's that nice, <laughs> good, that good lip balm, man. Yeah. That's the stuff to get. Yeah. But it is, it's so dry. Like, I think after you're here for a little while, you kind of adjust a little bit. Like mm. I've been here for almost 20 years now, I guess probably I know at the school here too, but so I'm kind of used to it. I don't dry out quite as much, you know, but man, like when people first get here, that's, they complain about it a yeah, ton. It's bad. I think people just don't realize like it really is like Colorado Springs is a high desert. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's yeah. dry, lips are drying out and then lotion, man. Lotion. You got lotion in the office, dude. I do. You, I keep that stuff on deck. Bottle, man. I keep it on <laughs> deck. I get super dried out here. I come from a very like humid, moist, 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 moist climate. <laughs> So I am not, I have, my skin has not gotten used to it yet. And I've been here for three years. So I am constantly <laughs> using lotion. My elbows arm, get man. super dry. Dude, I, get, I do get the ashy elbows. I yeah. you guys can see yeah. that, man. It's, it's the real and deal, man. pro tip, get some lotion with a little bit of sunscreen in it. A mm. little bit of sunscreen. That's a good call. It gets, it's really, really easy to get sunburn here. We are at a higher elevation. And it's just, I don't know, I get sunburn yeah. a lot easier. It's a like lot the easier sun's here. kicking more, man. It's higher. Yeah. Yep. I got another pro tip right now. Oh, yeah. Don't try to film when they're running a lawnmower behind you or whatever that is back there. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great pro tip. <laughs> Filming pro tip. Right, that's right. Yeah. No, but so lotion and lip balm, it's something everybody's like, what are you talking about? Especially guys. You know, of yeah. course, guys are like, I'm going to do a lip balm yeah. and lotion, man. You have elbows like this if you don't use lotion, man. Yeah, so, that's true. That's lip true. Lip balm and lotion. Yep. Number three. I'm going to say, this is a big one for me. I think you know mm -hmm. this is, don't take I-70 to the mountains. Only losers do that or yeah. people that live in Denver, I guess that might be a little bit more convenient. But if <laughs> you're in Colorado Springs, man, I, unless I'm going to Winter Park or like Lake Granby, somewhere up there, yeah. anywhere else, I never take I-70. I always take right here. We're in old Colorado City today, right? Highway 24, right out of OCC cruise up to, I think it's Highway 9, the over Hoosier Pass down to Breckenridge. Mm. That's the way to go. I'm telling yeah. you, man, like I-70 is a poo show and you can't time it up. It used to be, you'd be like, oh, I'm gonna go skiing. I know I've got to come back Sunday at midday because Sunday night's gonna be terrible coming back. Yeah. 
Not anymore, man. No. Every freaking day it's is terrible. Bad. Yeah. And I will say, if you are going to take the back way and Ooh. it's winter time, you gotta check. Check road <laughs> closures. I have made this mistake before. I did not see. I was actually trying to avoid traffic on I-70, of course. So I took the back way. 285 was closed. So I went all the way through to Leadville and it was dark it was snowing it was <laughs> sketchy no as hell um and i ended up going eastbound on i-70 and still getting stuck on traffic and that was actually terrifying oh my god like man. i mean it was pitch black couldn't yeah. see anything sleet snow there's probably black ice on the road right yeah yeah and people are flying just down wait to fly over the hill oh, somewhere. Yeah. it was terrifying it took me four hours to get there um, actually, I ended up going to a brewery up there and was talking to the bartender, <laughs> told him my choice. story, and he gave me a free beer. So I got <laughs> something out of the deal. At least uh, the day was it a total loss. Yeah, but then uh, that weekend I took I-70, or I think it was it was a Sunday, took I-70 back, and it also took me four hours to get back. So there's just sometimes yeah. sometimes there's no good way. Sometimes it's bad. But yeah. there's like so there's I-70, which most people know. Like you go I-25, 470 in Denver, and then you cruise up I-70. Mm -hmm. Cruise is a loose term because you're usually going slow. Yeah. But another thing is that they're getting, I don't know if you saw this, they're getting ready to start. It's a huge road construction project. You know, if you're going through, you kind of, you leave out of Denver, you're making that big climb and you're going through that Genesee Park area. Yeah. And then you start, there's that real big steep downhill and there's that big mine on the right-hand yeah. side. I think it's like a, I don't know, I think it might be like a salt mine or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But right past that, at the bottom of that hill, there's a super sharp bend yep. and traffic always gets jacked up there. So it's like, I think that said it was five year road construction project. And yeah. they're gonna like blast half, half the mountain off oh, wow. and take the road straight. So you know it's gonna be a freaking pre show for be ever going bad. through there. It's like this spot where it always bottlenecked anyway. And yeah. now it's gonna be under construction for years. So that's one option. And then the other option is to go, like I said, west out of town and then go Highway 9 to Fair Play and then go over Hoosier Pass into Breckenridge down through that Blue River area. Yeah. But then if you're going to go f even farther to the west on I-70, like if you're going like to <clears throat> Copper Mountain or if you're going to Ath or, uh, Vail or, you know, something on the west slope, then you can go, like you were saying, through Leadville. Yeah. And I think that's Tennessee Pass. Okay. Then you yeah. go over, goes through Minturn and brings you kind of, I think that brings you like right down into, right, right into Vail. So you're already on the other side of Vail Pass. So there's a couple ways to get to stuff in the mountains, but bottom line, don't take I-70. Don't take I-70. Don't take I-70. Yeah. Number four, who needs Breckenridge and Summit County when you've got Buena Vista and Salida? Oh, yes. yes. I right. love talking about Buena Vista mm. and Salida. I do too, man. I do too. It's, What's? Yeah, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Um, yeah, it's a lot easier drive. Uh, you've got a couple different ways. You can actually take I-24. Uh, actually, 24 runs all the way into Buena Vista and Salida. Yeah, straight in, yeah. Um, you can also take, and this is kind of the more scenic drive, you can take 115 south out of Colorado Springs. You go through Canyon City, and then what highway is that that runs along the Arkansas? 50. 50, yeah, Highway 50. Absolutely gorgeous. You're going through Bighorn Sheep Canyon. It goes right, yeah. I mean, directly into Salida. Really, really cool spot. Uh, I'm a big fan of BVN Salida. One, Salida's a lot cheaper than anywhere in Summit County. Yeah, especially, Summit County's just, it's just expensive. It's yeah. super expensive. Um, especially like peak, you know, peak ski season, you can't find a hotel anywhere in Summit County for under $250 a night. There's a couple motels in Salida. It's a motel, you're not staying at like <laughs> the, the Hilton Ritz, man. or something. <laughs> But, you know, it's $100 a night. So, and that drive, especially after a day of snowboarding, oh, yeah. is a real pain in the butt. It's about the same distance if you were going to Summit County. Um, but it's just yeah. a lot better. I mean, it's not nearly as crowded. You know, pretty yeah. much everybody that comes here, especially in the winter time to go skiing, is going out to Summit County to Vail, Keystone, Breckenridge, you name it. Yeah. Those are those really, really congested ski resorts. And uh, Monarch, which is just outside of Salida, is kind of a local spot, really. It is, man, yeah. I think it's like locals and the people that come up from the south. So if somebody's like, drive it up from like Texas, New Mexico, mm -hmm. Arizona, I think they'll hit Monarch a little bit yeah. just because it's a lot farther south in Colorado. Yeah. But man, yeah, that's that's the place to go. And for me, even more so in the summertime. Yeah. Because in the summertime, like, so the Arkansas River flows from north, it flows out of the Twin Lakes Reservoir, flows south through Buena Vista, mm -hmm. and then it kind of turns right where Salida is. It kind of makes that hard bend and comes down the canyon. 
But man, like rafting, yeah, ATV riding, tons of hiking. I mean, there's more 14ers right there. So that's the exactly ton of fishing, fishing in that area. Yeah. I mean, to me, there's more to do there in the summertime by far than there is in Summit County. Yeah, oh, personally. definitely, definitely. I was actually just there this last weekend. Um, there's some great dispersed camping spots. There yeah. are reserved camping spots. We don't want to have to worry about finding a spot. Um, there's just a lot of really, really cool stuff out there. And then once you get into town, um, some spots I would recommend Eddie Line Brewing in Buena Vista has mm. the best chicken wings I think I've literally ever <laughs> nice. had. I've never had yeah. that. I feel like I'm making a drive later today. Yeah, we literally drove. It started raining this last weekend when we were camping, so we drove into town. It was like 45 minutes from where we were camping just to get chicken wings. <laughs> just to get some wings, Just to get man. some wings. <laughs> uh, there's great little art galleries there. There's a really good distillery called Deer Hammer that I would recommend if you like whiskey. Um, it's just a cool spot. You can go sit on the river and yeah. watch people, you know, rafting. Uh, river surfing is kind of taken yeah, off yeah, down yeah. there. Yeah. There's some like, like I guess an endless wave that people just shred. Just get on, yeah. yeah. Get on <laughs> Pretty cool, go, man. Yeah. And for Buena Vista, it's because I will say like, if you're looking for kind of the quintessential mountain ski town kind mm -hmm. of look, like that's probably like Breckenridge or something, right? So with Buena Vista, something to keep in mind is when you're driving, I'll admit, man, you come down 24 and you hit 285 there and you're getting ready to turn north to go. There's like that prison there, yeah. you know, and then like you're going into Buena Vista. When you're on the main highway, you're kind of driving through like, this isn't really all that special. Right, yeah. There's, I think it's K's, which is that burger and milkshake shop yeah it's like that little tiny place yeah but whatever you're driving through on 24 you got to turn off you got to go like down towards the river because that's where like the cool stuff is and i feel like a lot of people they're just driving through town and they don't really realize that, oh i've got to drive down this because it doesn't really look like there's that much going on down there right but once you get down there it is cool mm -hmm. and i think too like salida has grown a lot in the last probably 10 years i would say it used to be kind of kind of janky not really that much but now like that little downtown salida area Distillery, brewery, good restaurants, mm -hmm. just a lot of cool stuff down there now. Five. Numero cinco. Avoid Garden of the Gods on the weekends. The huge tourist trap. Man, the weekends, I I would almost say all summer long. Yeah. Because during the summer, when mm -hmm. kiddos are out of school, families are on their vacations, man, it's like this constant just freaking circle because it's like a circle road that goes through it. Constant mm -hmm. circle of people. Yeah. Parking lots are full. Now, I will admit, it's a beautiful park, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, gorgeous. But if you want to avoid that, where would you go? Red Rocks Open Space. Just on the other side of 24 right, right here. Right over here. Um, actually, so I mentioned this earlier, but uh, Red Rocks Open Space is partially why old Colorado City is called Colorado and the state of Colorado. Do you tell. Yeah. So uh, back in the gold mining days, uh, it actually was originally called El Dorado, but Colorado in Spanish means red. red. So, so right. hello, Red Rocks open space right there, partially responsible for the name Colorado. How about Pretty cool. That, huh? How Pretty about cool. That? Yeah, take that, Denver. That's right. We got Denver, nothing. <laughs> I will uh, say that the Red Rocks open space, you don't have the classic, like there's the Kissing Camels rock in Garden of the Gods. There's mm -hmm. Balance Rock, which is super cool. So I'm not saying don't go there, mm -hmm. but if you just want a little bit more relaxing time, there's actually more trails in Red Rocks. There's, I think, just as good if you like to climb. You do have to have a permit, but if you want to climb, there's just as good of climbing, I think, you know, or almost in Red Rocks. Mm -hmm. um, I would say there's better bike trails yeah. in Red Rocks for yeah. sure. There's a little actual like bike park. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, skill yeah. park there. Yeah. yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, so it's just, I mean, that's a pretty, that's a pretty easy one. I'm not saying don't go to Garden of the Gods, but definitely if you want to avoid those crowds, head on over to Red Rocks. Yeah. Number six, free shuttle to the incline. What the heck's the incline, Francis? I don't know. I'm not from Colorado Springs. Wow. The incline is basically a massive staircase in Manitou Springs. That's, so that's a good way to put it. So the best way to put it, it's, it's just a huge staircase. It's a mile long staircase. Yeah, it's Gains like 3,000 feet, if yeah. I remember right, in one mile. Yeah. Bunch of old railroad timbers. Used mm -hmm. to be part of the Cog Railway um, that went up part of Pikes Peak. So now they've made a trail out of it. It's a great workout. Yeah. I will not, I used to do it a ton. Don't do it as much as I used to anymore, but uh, great workout but probably i don't know four or five maybe six years ago they changed the whole thing it used to be there's a free parking place parking lot you could go to it's right at the base of bar trail which is a trail that goes up to the top of pikes peak mm -hmm. you could park there for free everybody loved it 
And then they started, they put a meter in, yeah. and then you had to start paying for it, and then you had to start reserving your times to go. It was craziness, man. So it kind of lost some of that old school nostalgia, but now it's so chaotic up there. Like I wouldn't even try to park anywhere like in Manitou. Ruxton Avenue is the road that kind of goes up to the trailhead where the Cog Railway is. They get, people get cranky if you park there. So at the end of town, so this would be the east side of Manitou Springs, right, it's right at Highway 24, Manitou Avenue. There's a park there. It's like a little city park, but you can park for free. And there's usually spots there. Mm -hmm. And there's a shuttle that goes from there. Oh. I think there's one other stop in town as well. Like if you're parked on, um, I guess, is that still Colorado Avenue that goes through Manitou Springs? I think it's Manitou Boulevard. Manitou Boulevard, yeah, yeah. it changes names, you're right, yeah. But yeah, so the shuttle leaves them right there. You don't have to worry about parking up there. Yeah. You don't have to worry about paying. You don't have to worry about the hassle of it. You just gotta wait for the shuttle, I guess. That's the only hassle, probably. Yeah. But yeah. Not too bad, though. Not too bad. So definitely, free shuttle if you're gonna go do the incline. A lot of people still don't know about that. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Number seven. Number, Number seven. seven. And if you are gonna go to Garden of the Gods on the weekends and you wanna avoid some of those uh, tourists, yes. But there is thinking. actually a back entrance to Garden of the Gods. So uh, in Ooh. Pleasant Valley, off of, you take 31st all the way until it dead ends, which is right where Chambers is, and there is a back entrance over there. So you don't really have to worry about parking, driving through Garden of the Gods. Yeah. Great, great way to explore Garden of the Gods, which is actually, this, you know that's the number one park, or city park in the country? I did not know yeah. that. Yeah, I knew it was a really popular city yeah. park. I think it's interesting that it's a city park. A lot of people think they think it's a state park. Nah, but it's yeah. actually city of Colorado Springs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number one city park in the country. But yeah, there is a back entrance, so definitely recommend taking that if you're wanting to. If you're just if you know you're visiting, want to see it on the yeah. weekend, take the back entrance and thank us later. Thank us later. Yeah. Can I say one more about yeah. entrances in the Garden of the Gods? Let's hear it. This isn't as good as that. That's the best tip. Do that for sure. <laughs> but maybe you have some people with you and they really don't want to walk as much, and you're probably going to be driving through the park, but. The main entrance off of 30th Street, Chaos, right by the Visitor Center. The entrance that goes by Balance Rock. Oh, yeah. Like right off of uh, Highway 24. Can't think of the name of the street. But Highway 24, put a map up there. Highway 24, you get off there, you could go in right by Balance Rock. That's, those two entrances, Chaos all the time. Yeah. There is one that snakes through the neighborhood and it ends up at the Garden of the Gods Trading Post. So you actually can take Colorado Avenue, and you get off where there's, um, you turn where there's a, there's an RV park and you just kind of sneak back through that neighborhood and you put, it brings you right into the backside of the Garden of the Gods trading post. So a lot of people like to go to the trading post anyway, but there's not a lot of cars that go in and out that way. Cause you kind of, it's just not obvious to go that way. Yeah. So number one, definitely go 31st Chambers, walk into the park. You're not going to see anybody else there. It's awesome. But if you got to drive, maybe hit up that back entrance over to the Garden of the Gods trading post. Just don't go the other two ways. Yeah, that's no. that's the long and short of it. Don't Unless go the you like ways. traffic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sitting in traffic. Yeah, not moving at all. At least it's yeah. scenic. You know, it is. You got nice rocks to look at, I guess, but you're still <laughs> yeah. sitting there. So yeah, man. Well, those are those are seven. Obviously, there's a lot more local tips than this, but these are just seven that Francis and I thought of. That hey, those are pretty good ones to tell people about. So if you have any questions whatsoever, you guys know we're here to help. Especially if you're thinking about relocating to Colorado Springs with the number one relocation team in the city. So mm -hmm. questions. Call, text, email, hit us up in the comments. We just want to make sure you guys have all the info if you're headed this way.